what is innovation and what we do in business hacking? Remember what Amazon did back at the beginning? They sold books out of a garage on the internet. But things changed and now it's hard to say exactly how many businesses they have. And Google, remember Google? It started as a search engine and now this giant is helping make self-driving cars a reality. When I live in the United States, Netflix will ship DVDs to customers by email. So when the company CEO decided to pivot 180 degrees and make it into a streaming business, do you remember what happened? Their stocks plummet and shareholders said they were killing the goose that laid the golden eggs. My question is this, if these businesses were already successful, why they decided to change? Why they take a path that led them into an entirely different direction? We probably all agree that they innovated technology-wise, and that was a great decision. But let me assure you, it's not enough. Innovation is a vision that goes far beyond the use of technology. What aspects of innovation will prove fundamental in the next 15 years? What examples are there worldwide to back this up? Where is Globan positioned in this regard? And what should it do to continue having a positive impact on our customers? These questions led to the creation of Business Hacking, the studio that is the tip of the iceberg in terms of uh, business transformation at Globan. Will we always be a technology firm or is that's just how we began. Let's find out. We know that Globan is an expert at implementing technology solutions, which means that innovation plays a natural part. And business hacking was laid out within that framework to create organizational transformation with direct impact on our clients' businesses, adding value now and in the future. But to explain exactly what this is, let me first tell you how we got here. We already know the backstory. Innovation allowed Globan to grow, build a strategic market position, and become well-established. When I joined the company 14 years ago, it had been founded only four years prior. At that point, Globan had 250 employees and was invoicing $30 million per year. Now, there are around 25,000 Globers worldwide with estimated sales of 1.7 billion for 2022. For 10 years, I accompanied that growth as CFO, constantly reinventing myself as part of the company's own growth. Thanks to the market knowledge it garnered over the years, Globan achieved an in-depth understanding of our client business and the challenges the transformation entail. Yet, because of that growth and due to the operational aspects of my job, I felt a distance between myself and many of our clients, and I wanted to reach them spend more time with them so I could have an impact on their business. I wanted to be able to co-create the future with them. Let me be clear here. Certain areas are rock solid and they become a fixed part of uh, the business because they are appealing and profitable. And that's fine. For example, we sell services to several different banks and professional services organizations worldwide, where we staff thousands of our Globers. For Globan, it works. A rate is negotiated, an invoice is sent, the profit margin is acceptable, the CFO is happy, and if our growth exceeds the market growth and our share increases, voila, everyone is happy. The problem is the following. A strategy like that works for the time being, but doesn't guarantee the impact and relevance of Globan as a strategic partner in the long run. This holds especially true in an increasingly competitive market where technology moves faster and faster and where our client companies are also evolving into tech companies themselves. For example, on Wall Street today, many banks have had an AI department much bigger than Globan's AI studio. So we have to think about how to position ourselves as leaders, not in the next two or three years, but in the next 10 to 15 years. It's not the same. In the middle term, Technology alone won't keep you competitive and we won't be able to stand out as an organization. So that's why about three years ago, we felt like it wasn't enough to tell our customers, I'll give you a hand with technology and fix your problems. 
you'll find whatever you need at one of Global 30 something studios. Looking toward the future, that came up short. And that's how the idea of this new studio started coming together. A studio that would aggressively go out searching for new markets, helping our customers initiate and then manage such profound change. We were convinced that the secret lay in shaking up the business. Transformations that went beyond technology. That's why the studio's name had to reflect that new identity. Yeah, right. Then we understood that besides convincing our clients, we had to convince Globan that business hacking could do something different. And that's how business hacking was born. Today, we know what we want to do to stand out in the market. It's not just about understanding our clients' business and adding value with a disruptive project that is finding new ways they can monetize their strategy, their products, their own market. It's about translating that project into a viable, concrete development with a meaningful impact on their digital transformation journey. To make a tangible impact on their business, we also need to expand and continually transform our cognitive accelerators. Products and platforms such as Augmented Coding, Be Healthy, PagoChat, Navigate and Start Me Up. This distinguishes us from other consultant firms that have limited themselves to drafting a project roadmap but don't accompany the client in making it into re a reality. We at Globan and through Business Hacking help ambition, design, build, impact and transform the end-to-end -end business. What's innovative about Business Hacking is that our go-to-market strategy is different from Globan's traditional strategy. Nowadays, we are in every region, not as a sandbox or pilot consultant, but as part of the DNA of each of our other regions. And our footprint keeps growing. Up until now, I have told you what we want to do to stand out. Now, I would like to tell you how we do it. First, no one understands the business challenge and competitive environment like we do. Many companies struggle to comprehend the real challenges they face. Challenges that could be addressed through better organizational design, process management, flexibility and agility, the use of smart data, technology enablers, and ultimately culture. At the end of the day, it's all about how to unlock value and differentiation in a continuous and sustainable way. Here's a typical example. You approach a client and they talk about transformation and more transformation. Then they say, I want to redo our website and the mobile app. It's only on iOS, and now I want to do it for Android. Uh, it can be used worldwide. Well, and it should be fancier, improve uh, UX and design, etc. That's only 1% of what transformation requires. When transformation is profound, the organization experiences a shakedown that is really, really difficult to measure. And we're not just talking about digital companies, where tech innovation has its own meaning, but we refer to companies with a core that is more physical in nature. Like an oil company, for instance, a manufacturer or a car factory that needs to blend a digital transformation with traditional brick and mortar models and evolve. And they trust in us because they know we're experts in continuously reinventing ourselves. We have several different cases where we have helped big organizations like major airlines or cruise lines looking to increase efficiency and engage with consumers uh, and transform. We have helped one of the world's largest entertainment companies reshape the experience of their consumers at the theme parks. We assisted large sports organizations to redesign the fan experiences on their OTT platforms. We have even created a full digital bank from scratch. These are all very successful examples of relevant important transformations. Now, to achieve this, we needed to put together a different kind of team, one that could accompany us throughout the consulting process and not just provide tech solutions. We have the studios for that. So we had to reinvent ourselves as a studio and hack Globan from within. And that's what we do, hacking inside out. We started recruiting a kind of talent that Globan wasn't used to. I'm referring to the kind of people who like the business side of things, not just the technical aspects. In other words, people interested in how technology and other key pillars of transformation will impact the client. What value does this approach uh, provide? 
We sought out talent with a background in technology, but also a broader vision. We brought in business people with experience in finance, retail, uh, pharma, and other verticals, as well as management consultants. They had to adapt to our culture as well, because at Globan, they aren't expected to just plan out a project. Instead, by laying out the strategies, they become responsible for overseeing those all the way throughout a successful delivery. And that's how we put together Business Hacking. It's an interdisciplinary team with certain specific skills that make us different. Some refer to us as a green dog. It's all the same. We can paint it any color we want. We're a startup inside Globan. The mix of talent we put together allow us to change the rules of the game and innovate from within. In my humble opinion, innovation is a pretty abstract concept. My background has led me to believe that you need to be able to execute and reinvent to actually innovate. What I mean is, I'm not creative, that's for sure. Being inventive isn't what I do. What I do is build on what others invent or create to adapt it and make it tangible. That's one of my skills. I work to make creativity a reality and that is also part of every single business hacker's role. And that's more than a concept. It's a decision to reinvent yourself constantly, not just as an individual, but also as a company. That's why, and let me say it again, it's about more than technology. It's a question of decision and drive. Take the case of Microsoft, a company I know very well as I were there for many years. As a technology firm, at some point, the people there realized that the other companies were leaving them into the dust because they were focused only on their so-called cash cows, the famous Windows and Office. And they hadn't realized that the market and the world were moving towards the cloud and developing a variety of tech products at the speed of light. So they hadn't invested enough in games or mobile, and they came in very late. Later, they reacted, made some changes at the management level, put together a new vision, and modified their strategy and turned the company around. Very successfully, I have to say, another example of reinvention. In conclusion, let me say this. Innovation is about reinventing, not just coming up with creative things. Instead, it's about people and companies having the desire to reinvent themselves and not fear change. And ultimately, it's about the power to make that change a reality. So if you're willing to reinvent yourself every day, well, that's innovation to me. There are a few quotes from Marshall Goldsmith's book, What Got You Here Won't Get You There, that I really like and I want to share with you. Fate is the hand of cards we have been dealt. Choice is how we play the hand. And another one, people who believe they can succeed see opportunities where others see threats. In that regard, a company like Globan gives you the power to choose. Although its growth made it into a company with more internal processes, it is also a place where you can also forge your own path if you find the opportunity. That's why my final message to you is choose your own destiny. Be the star, not the victim, and enjoy the ride. Thank you.